Hi everyone, I'm Christina Johnson here with a Fit a Museum new acquisition unboxing haul. I'm going to be pulling out a lot of different things that have come in over the last year or two, starting with this. A bonnet from the mid 1840s. It has a peach crepe overlay with these cotton flowers. The leaves are hand painted. The ribbons are satin cut and uncut velvet. And this doesn't always happen, but there's a tag attached with provenance, Mrs. Moses' wedding bonnet and samples of wedding dress. We did not get the wedding dress samples. Same bonnet as in photo of Johnny's Ma. This was written by someone in 1941. An evening jacket by Los Angeles-based designer James Galanos, who began his career here in L.A. in the early 1950s and retired in 1998. And he was known for his couture quality techniques and luxury. A close-up of the embroidery with all of the sequins. The plastic sequins here have a wood grain look, which is really interesting. This was likely done by the Getson Embroidery House. Galanos worked a lot with Getson, and they were well known in the film industry. Here is a copy of Tuesday Magazine in its protective mylar with its temporary tag. Tuesday Magazine was founded in 1965. It was a black-owned business, a magazine supplement in different urban newspapers. This one comes from the L.A. Herald Examiner. It was intended for a black audience and covered culture and politics. Here's a double page fashion spread called Color It Cool. And uh, it features a model wearing one of my favorite designers, Rudy Kernrick. The next item is a woman's sash. It has hand painting on the ends. You can see the cornucopia with flowers. Also some fringe, our conservator will be combing that out. This sash dates to the 1790s, so envision that Western European gown silhouette with me. This could have been tied in a number of different ways, but it would probably have been just underneath the bust, cascading down the full skirt. Okay, these are wonderful mid-1960s American soft plastic hangers, and they're meant for travel. When you got to your destination, take them out of your suitcase, blow them up, and it acts like a hanger. I'm really excited to show you this piece that was recently donated to the FITA Museum because it's by Cuban-American designer Isabel Toledo, and we did not have an example of her work in our collection. I think Toledo's designs are really a remarkable balance of intellect and beauty and thoughtfulness, and the people who purchase them uh, tend to hold on to them and wear them for a long time, so they don't often make their way into museums' collections. A detail of the garment label at the shoulder blade area. I have not dated this yet, but I believe it's from about 2005, like these dresses that appear in the Museum at FIT's 2009 publication, Isabel Toledo, Fashion from the Inside Out. I'm realizing I haven't shown any boxes during this unboxing, but I'm trying to fit in as much as possible. This tie was designed by the Memphis Group, based in Italy, early to mid-1980s, mostly known for postmodern interiors. Next is a late 20th century piece that I'm pretty excited about. I'll let you look at it here first. It's knit, and it was designed by Isemeyake. This coat is one of those pieces that really needs a body underneath it to animate it. It's made of cotton-wrapped fishing lines, so it's lightweight, it's buoyant, and it dates to spring-summer 1985. A detail of the knit at the back. And I'd like you to take a look at this book, Isimiyake, Photographs by Irving Penn, because in it, a model wears the coat. You can see the shape it takes on her body. This has been called the seashell coat. We're going to begin and end this new acquisition unboxing haul with objects that came with provenance notes. This stomacher dates to the 1730s, I believe. This is not my area of expertise, so DM us if you have info to add. This piece comes from Great Britain. You can see it has a lot of metallic embroidery. We can see stylized carnations and roses. And the reverse, which utilizes repurposed printed linen. And here's that note I mentioned, loan collection, sample of old embroidered stomacher with a name that's difficult to discern. I think it's W. Earl Marsh. 
Because of the descriptive aspect of the card and the use of the word loan, I believe this piece was once part of a collection or loaned temporarily to an exhibition before a dealer or dealers purchased it and before the Fitta Museum acquired it.